the very simple thing I would say, and this is the advice I give to most of the people that I work with, is that you need to take the focus off yourself, right? Because that is the thing that paralyzes you, okay? All the fears, all the anxieties, all the doubts are all to do with you and your vision of yourself, your paradigm of yourself, but also the way that you feel other people will think of you and see you uh, and the fears around making mistakes, the fears of failure, the fears of success, all those kind of things, those are mostly the things that cause issues when it comes to your communication. Because like, think about it, right? Like we're speaking now, I've, I've had no issue understanding what you say, right? I'm sure everyone else on the call, guys, if you're listening, like I'm sure you understand Furkan when he's speaking, right? Like you can hear what he's saying, you understand his words, you know what he's talking about, right? So you guys all understand him. So now we've established that you fundamentally have the ability to communicate. And you've been using this ability to communicate for decades, right? So you can see everyone saying, yes, they can understand you, they can. But now, when I put you in front of 200 people right now on a stage and I say, right, Furkan, now is the time for you to speak. Suddenly, all of that changes. Like, literally, you have the physical capability to speak. Why is it that when you get in front of 200 people, you feel like you can't speak or you feel like you have issues and this and that? And like, like I said, almost all of it, is to do with the fact that we put pressure on ourselves. We we basically make our doubts and our fears uh, on a much larger level. We kind of amplify our fears. We amplify our doubts, our anxieties, all these kind of things. And a lot of that is because the focus is on yourself, right? So I'm like, oh man, there's 200 people here. They're looking at my face. They're looking at my nose. They're looking at my hair. What if I make a mistake? What if I say something silly? What if I do this? What if I embarrass myself? It's all that, right? And fundamentally the focus is all wrong. The focus is completely wrong. The focus is not on where it should be, which is it should be on serving your audience, serving the people, doing things for the sake of Allah. And this is what we're saying about the Muhsin's, the Muhsin's paradigm and, and building that believer's confidence. It's about getting to that place where you're actually focused on giving value. You're focused on helping people. You're focused on your vision and your mission. And you're so busy with that stuff that you don't have time to think about all the other things because your focus is so much in to the other people and helping them and doing what you're there to do, right? So that shifting of focus is massive because what you focus on, uh, what you focus on is your reality. So if I sit here focusing on my doubts and my faults as a person, whether the way I speak or my physical faults or anything like that, that will become my reality. Like my reality then will be my negative, my negative paradigm of myself. And that's what I'm going to project to you. But if I sit here thinking, look, how can I help Furqan to the next level? How am I going to shift his transformation with Allah? How am I going to shift his relationship with his parents? Like when I start thinking about that, I don't have time to think about my, my spot on my nose and my head and all this rubbish. Right. And, and that's what I'm saying fundamentally that for me, that's one of the biggest kind of shifts in my mindset that I kind of thought, look, do I want to do this position? and do it in the best way or do I just want to complain about it and not really do it because if I don't really want to do it then just say don't do it and, and just don't do it and then you won't need to do public speaking right but I was like no I do want to serve the people I want to do good I want to build this organization I want to do this I'm like, okay so this is something I need to do right and so then that's what I'm saying that my focus became more about giving value to people rather than what worrying about what everyone's going to say about me or think about me yeah I think I think generally that that is my paradigm now i think definitely more than ever before because i found by this this is why my fundamental belief i always advise brothers and sisters is like go and do volunteering why because whenever i've done volunteering i've found that the return on investment is so much better and the same with the giving like i know if i like i i, I actually have alhamdulillah now i have this mindset where i love giving right i love giving and um I feel bad if I don't give and I feel bad if I can't give. It's like I was get, I was going to get my I was going to swap my car yesterday, my rental car, right? And in my car I, I was going to I was going to change my car and in my car I had change, right? So when I had change in my car on the street on the motorway in Istanbul, there was beggars there, right? So I gave them all the money, right? And I gave them all the change that was in there. And as I drove off to accelerate, I realized that there was still one coin, I heard it, ting, ting, and I was like, oh man, I feel so bad, I couldn't give it to them. But this is the amazing thing about intention, right? That it's like I gave that already because my intention was to give it all. And the reason why I love giving is because I'm like, you know what, like, I'm going to get. So in my mind now, giving is actually getting. Like if I want something, I'm just going to give and I'll, and I'll get like that, right? But I've got to tell you that you got to realize that this paradigm is based on me not giving for a huge amount of time, okay? So... Like, although it seems like that now, part of this story, like you heard at the start was, 
around me being in university and cruising through university and being very easy going and having a great time, great time at university and everything. Right. And fundamentally like not giving, not helping people, not doing anything for others. Right. And then it was the regret of those two, three, four years that I feel I wasted, which actually fueled the giving for me. And I feel that if I had given, I had been normal in that, I think I would have been normal at the level of most people where, you know, they just do good stuff. But for me, when I got into that, I felt like I was 10 years behind, man. I'm like, look at all these other guys who started like five years ago giving. And I'm like a loser who's done nothing. And now I'm coming to the race. So I just need to like take it to the next level, you know? So this is why I would say that um, this is something I would build. What, what I would advise is that this is what happens to a lot of people is that the key to actually solving it is the conversation with yourself. Right. So remember in, in my story, the conversation with myself was, look, I'm sick and tired of feeling anxious and like nervous and all this way whenever I have to speak on stage. Right. So now the situation is either I'm going to like, you know, just get on with it and do it, or I'm going to leave this job. And what I'm saying is that it's all to do with questioning and realizing what you're saying, because there's certain things that you will say to yourself which will make you feel a certain way. That's the story. That's the paradigm. And the key to shifting performance is understanding how are things being built in terms of the paradigm? How are things occurring to you based on the language? So it's critical that you start to understand what's the language that you're using when it happens. Right. And then also the change will come through the language as well. Right. So it's not like something, Oh, I can't do anything with this. It's like undoable. No, no, no. Like if you can shift a better alternative, then like that will actually become the paradigm and that will replace it as well. And of course, some of it's practice. You sometimes you'll still slip into the old habit and all this kind of stuff. But like you said, you're kind of catching yourself. You're holding yourself more accountable and all this stuff. I would just say, just like, you know, go through the program, take the action. Like you're seeing different people take, uh, and just keep building each other. I think if it's something that's disempowering, then I would definitely change it. Right. I would definitely, definitely replace that with something else. Because look, t tell me this, right? If someone's not really that important, where do they deserve to go? Jannah or Jahannam? I mean, what I'm saying is that this, this is what you need to ask yourself, right? Like these kind of things, because fundamentally, if, if, for example, me saying, you know, I'm nothing special, right? Imagine me saying I'm nothing special to me enables me to be more humble in my prayers. It enables me to deal with human beings, but it enables me to do all these things. Right. And it's like really empowering and it's really good. I'm like, that's great. It works really well for you. You should keep it and you shouldn't change it. Right. But if I have that mentality and then when I'm speaking with human beings, I can't connect with them or, you know, things are not going well in communication and the way, the way like I feel in a conversation or when I feel when I'm speaking in public and this is all not right. Then I'm like, no, you need to change that. And there's one thing that I would do with a lot of the brothers that I was uh, training is that look, fundamentally, I would do the opposite of that. I would say to them that like, if you're going to speak in front of a crowd, for example, do you deserve to speak in that crowd? What's the answer? Yes. Yeah. Right now that is critically important because if you say to me that I don't deserve to speak in that crowd, like when I'm going to speak to, I don't deserve to speak there. Then how do you think your performance is going to be? Right. Yeah. I don't even deserve to speak here. Like subconsciously even, right? Like you're sending out a vibe to the people listening to you that I'm not even worth listening to. I'm not even worth you giving your time and your attention to. Right. So with a lot of the people, I'm like, look, you need to shift wherever you're thinking and you need to say, I deserve to be here. And you know what happens when you say I deserve to be here? Then there's no hiding. Then there's then then you actually have to raise your level up. There's no like, oh, yeah, I don't deserve to be here. So if I do crap and all I do all this, it doesn't matter. No, no, no. If it's like I deserve to be here, then it's like that's it. And I'm saying, by the way, this should not be an arrogance thing. Yeah. Like I remember I, I <laughs> whenever I do like conferences or speaking, I always say to Rob, I'm like, tell me everything about it. I plan my talk. And I said, you know what? My talk is going to be the best talk of all, inshallah. And they laugh. They laugh at me, you know, when I say that. And I'm like, I don't know why you're laughing because it's my sincere intention that for the sake of Allah, like my talk is going to be the best because that's my intention. I want these people to move close to Allah. I want these people. And, and that's how I'm, I'm kind of thinking. Because if, if you're calling me to speak at your conference and there's 10 other speakers, right? Why are they not all thinking that? Because someone's going to give me their time they're going to give me their life. They're going to give me their attention. They're going to give me their focus. They're going to give me all of that. 
and then I'm gonna like come late or I'm gonna not do it or I'm gonna say something that doesn't really mean anything or I'm not gonna put time and effort into it. Like, how does that make sense, right? What should happen is the opposite. It's like, someone's giving you the time, attention, and focus. You should be grateful for that. You should be giving them maximum respect. You should be respecting their time by preparing amazing stuff, by communicating in an amazing way. Like all of this stuff, this is how we should be thinking, right? Um, and that's what I'm saying to you, that the same thing, that if you find that it's disempowering you, then I would replace it with something more positive. Uh, and I would be like, yeah. Or maybe you could add something. You could you could say, look, you know, you know, we as human beings are nothing special compared to Allah, but da, 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 da. because if you think about that, Allah also talks about how human beings have been raised to that level and how human beings are the best uh, of mankind in all of this stuff, right? And, and it's very interesting when Allah talks about you being the best of mankind, you know, a lot of that is to do with your belief in Allah, but it's also to do with like communication, enjoying the good and forbidding the evil, right? That, that's also to do with communication. So I really, really feel that I think that the level of how much you deserve to be there and that level needs to be turned up a little bit. Now, I'm not saying you go to that level where you're arrogant and you're like strutting on the stage, you know, or that, but I'm like, it needs to be taken up a few notches.